Okay, this is uh, this will be considered the first video for the digital image manipulation module. Basically, you're going to take images and you're going to modify them. Um, a term that we use or that we hear a lot is that we hear that oh that photo has been that picture has been photoshopped. Well, GIMP is essentially a free version of Photoshop. It's not made by the Photoshop people by Adobe but it contains many of the tools that are available in Photoshop that you're going to end up paying several hundred dollars for. Now you can purchase Adobe Photoshop Elements which is a watered down version of uh, the actual Adobe Photoshop program for about a hundred dollars um, but we're going to use GIMP because what you learn here will apply in the other uh, in Photoshop or Fireworks or uh, a number of different image manipulation programs. So, um, if we take a look at what we have here as a default setup, we'll notice that the whoops that the um, the default setting here is that GIMP has three windows open. One that's called well, one here is your image window, okay, and this is where your images will show up. The other one here is your toolbox window, and in this case we also have tool options. And over here we have our layers and brushes window. Now if by chance that you end up closing one of these by accident, um, just click on Windows, and if you just did it, click on Recently Closed Docs, and choose the, well in this case, Layers, Channels, Paths everything will come back. Um, don't do this. Never move a window out of your screen like this because, and I'm not letting it go here because I want to bring it back, but what will happen is that you may end up moving it off the screen and I have a little trick for you to get that back but it's another, another video and it's a little bit of a pain to have to go through this. So don't move it off the screen. Um, and you should be okay. Now if by chance you ended up say closing it and you can't bring it back with recently closed docs, this would be empty for some reason, you could go over to dockable dialogs here under windows and in this case you notice that I have layers and that's really the most important one you want to keep up and running channels and stuff not quite yet but I'll bring it back and here's my layers window. It looks slightly different than what I had before because you'll notice that I had different dialogues here. I had different tabs and so right now I only have the layers one but if I click on um, dockable dialogues and say I wanted to bring channels back whoops I could bring it up but it's going to uh, show up in its own separate window and I could try moving it around but it's not going to let me. So in order to have it in the same window, what you need to do is click on this little arrow here, the Configure This Tab, and Add a Tab, and then you can add your channels, add your paths. One that I like is Navigation. So it doesn't really matter which ones you bring up yet, as long as you do have layers up and running, because we're going to, uh, to work with layers here shortly. In this case, we do not have a an actual image, one that uh, was a photo or one that we've created using, you know, we're drawing like we would do in paint. Be and we can tell that because we have this sort of gray background here. So what you need to do to create a new image, and in this case it would be you're not opening up an existing photograph, but you're creating a workspace for you to draw on, for instance you just click on File New. The default image size is 640 by 400 pixels and that'll be fine for now. I'll let you know when it's time to change these for assignments that are coming up. This, uh, these dimensions can also be changed uh, as a default uh, later on if you wanted a larger size or whatever. So I'm going to click OK and now you'll notice that I have a different looking background. It looks like I can do something with this background. You'll also notice that here at the top in my title bar that the image has not been saved. It says untitled. Uh, ignore this part. 
for now, but it says it has one layer, and it tells me what the dimensions of this layer, uh, of this uh, image will be. Also here, as I pull any tool onto, and it doesn't matter which one you pick, but as I pull any tool onto my workspace, you'll notice that I have a ruler here at the top. It may or may not be in view, but you'll notice here that I can click on view and show rulers. It happens to be in view as a default, and it shows me from 0 to 600. So what would this be over here? This would be about 640 right? 640 pixels wide. From 0 to 400, we don't see the 400, but we can uh, we can sort of infer that 400 is here. As we pull our pointer onto the screen, we'll notice that you may have a cross here, you may have something different, completely different, but you'll notice that at the bottom left corner of your screen right here, we'll see some numbers. And so those numbers will tell us where we're, where our pointer or where our tool is located on this window. So in this case here, if you take a look at it, I'm located at 601.55. So 601 pixels width-wise from the left and 55 pixels uh, height-wise from the top. So over here, that means that this would be, this very corner would be 0, 0, or 1, 1, if I can get it there. Okay, I just want you to notice this. It's not going to come into play too often. Um, and it's measured in pixels. So we can change the units of measure as well. If I wanted to do this in inches, I could do that as well. But I'll bring it back to pixels. That's how I usually work. Over here it shows us that we have a zoom. So we're viewing this at its original size. Not that there's anything to view, but we'll play with these zoom numbers here uh, shortly. This navigate the image display thing would be, we were looking at the actual image, but we could decide that we wanted to add something to the image outside of its boundaries. In other words, we could uh, enlarge what we call our, um, in this case, it would be our layer or our canvas. But we won't worry about this yet, okay? And you'll notice that you also have your scroll bars here. So an important thing with GIMP is, okay, if you're working on something, it's a good idea to save your work on a regular basis. And when I say on a regular basis, I mean often. Um, GIMP is a little less stable a program than, say, Photoshop. And what I mean by that is it can crash depending on your computer configuration, depending on what you do, what, you know, operations you perform in GIMP. All of a sudden, uh, it might just crash on you. It doesn't happen too often, to me at least, but um, it's worth noting that uh, you shouldn't be working on something for uh, 10 or 15 minutes and not having saved it because uh, it's possible that you'll lose that work if everything crashes on you. So to um, make a point here is I'm going to click on these tools. This one, first one here is a rectangle select tool. I'll just create myself a rectangle. Now I'm going to fill that rectangle with a color. The fill color right now is going to be black. That's my foreground color, this box here, and that's my background color. Well, I may as well change this to a different color, and I'll come back into an, the next video. I'll talk more about this. I'll just pick a color here real quick. It looks like a peach color, and I'll click OK. And by clicking on my bucket fill tool, and it says that the fill type here will be my FG color. And what do you suppose FG stands for? FG would stand for foreground, which means the front. If I click on my rectangle that's selected, uh, I fill it in. So I have an image, somewhat, and I decide that, you know what, the bell's going to ring, I'm done for the day, but I'd like to come back tomorrow and edit this some more. So it would be worth saving it, and you can save or save as the first time. You'll get a dialog box here that will prompt you for a name. Uh, what I would recommend you do is that you create yourself a folder on your student drive.
perhaps you'll call it digital technologies and a subfolder to that called maybe digital imaging or GIMP, uh, GIMP images, something that you will recognize uh, as a place where you will save your images. And GIMP's native file format is XCF. We'll talk more about this later on, but I'm going to give it a name. I'll call this one my first image. And I'm a fan of no spaces. Okay, when I name something, I always name it with no spaces. I guess old school is that I'm old school in the, in the fact that uh, I've had too many issues with spaces, especially when we create an image and then we want to upload it and have it viewed on a website. And it may not be uh, an issue today, but I still uh, I still abide by that. I'm just going to save this here in my W drive real quick. And as I'm waiting for this, basically I clicked on my W drive. I'll just click on my digital tech and I choose a folder. So I'm in a folder right now, digital tech. Maybe I'd like to save it under development and maybe under development. That's where I'll save it. I'll click save. And so my image is now saved. I can sort of assert that by looking at my title bar. I have a, a name here. And as I continue working, let's say that I decide that I want to use my little eraser here and erase something and then save it. It's worth saving on a regular basis. Control S will be your shortcut for doing that. But just save your images on a regular basis so that you don't lose um, your work that you've done. I'm going to close it real quick just to show you what happens when you close it and you want to come back to something that you uh, create it say yesterday and you, you log in again and, and you want to you don't ha want to have to look for it all over the place although you you should know where to find it but you can click on file open recent and it will show you the last um, images or the last files that you've had open with GIMP and so in this case here it brings it up and I'm good to go I can keep working on it keep saving it until um, it's the way I want it to be and then later on we'll do something called export to turn it into a JPEG, into an image that will be uh, accessible or viewable on a website or uh, in Word or, or whatever. So I'm going to, going to end the video here. Um, I hope that this very first video was uh, useful to you. I'd like you to experiment with uh, what we've gone through. You may want to review the video again, pause it at times to try things out. And uh, if you've tried things that I've gone over and it doesn't quite make sense, I'd like you to contact me so that we can uh, I can kind of take you through it and uh, address any issues because the uh, foundation here will be important. What you learn at the early stages of the module or of the unit. Uh, will carry you through the end of the unit. So I'll see you in the next video.